we've been using the pretty much the full two hours. So um, we had two minute going in today and wanted to get a move the ball period prior to that, um, but we had a we had to adjust a little bit, and at least we got one of the two minutes in. So, um, but I thought the guys they've been they've been competing hard and. I think the attitude's been outstanding and just try to continue to get a little bit better each and every day. What do you think about the attendance you've gotten these last couple of weeks and how important it was to get as much participation as possible with all the changes you have to us? Yeah, it's always important. Um, certainly as coaches, we feel that way, and but it's voluntary. And so these guys have a decision to make and certainly we, we love being around the guys and I think we got a great group of guys. Um, that are focused on getting better and becoming closer as a team, and um, I think we've been able to accomplish a lot, and uh, you know, over the the course of this time. You got joint practices against two teams mm-hmm. this summer. What is the benefit of having the next practice against two teams? Yeah, you just get you know it changes up the monotony of of camp. I'd say of guys going against each other, and what's great about going to Cincinnati is. Um, you know, it's going to give us a little bit of a longer bonding trip to for our guys to hang out together, and um, we think it's going to be a really valuable experience. Does that change anything with Jordan as far as preseason playing time? You know what? We're not there yet, so I, I'm really open to anything this preseason. Um, certainly not going to shut the door on anything, anything right now. It's it's kind of going to be a feel for where we're at and what we need to get accomplished. And if we feel like he needs time, then we'll throw him in there. Are you to the point where you know how long you'll be in Cincinnati for that extended year? If not, what's the process of the decision making like that you can't about it doing that? Yeah, I think we're going to be there. Is it? We play on Friday, I believe. So uh, is it Friday? OK. So I think we're going on. On Tuesday, and that's how I feel right now. So, um, I think we leave on a Tuesday. We'll have a, a you know a light practice here in the morning. We'll leave. We'll practice against them on Wednesday. We'll walk through on Thursday. Then we'll play the game on Friday evening. So it's going to give us a couple nights there to, you know, hopefully be a great bonding experience for our team. Yeah, I'm sure that it, it is difficult. Anytime you have somebody that you're you're invested in and um, you know are close with, and they they move on, it's it is hard. But I think he's done an outstanding job. He's he's been a really positive influence, um, especially in the offensive line room. I always when we go in there, and he's always given coaching points and tips to the guys and. So I think he's done uh, a really good job, and you know we're going to be smart with them throughout the course of OTAs. What did you think of that two-minute drill? I thought it was good. I thought it was good. I mean, certainly, it's what's good for one side is bad for the other. So, um, but I, I just like that our guys are competing. I think we we're learning how to practice. And, you know, just the standards that we want. I think our defense is doing an outstanding job of running to the football, and at the same time trying to keep each other safe because ultimately we just want to get better and and make sure our guys are working together and really not putting anybody in a compromising uh, position out there on the field. So you end up with spike because you field goal because it's raining. Why do you end up spike? Because we only kick field goals at the end of games. <laughs> so um, it was the end of half of a two minute. So um, and eight seconds left. I mean, if we if we were in that situation, you might take a shot at the end zone. But um, certainly, again, you're kind of putting the guys at a little bit more at risk in those, especially when you're throwing a ball up. Um, so I just rather shut it down right there and you know kick the field goal and move on. Yeah, Rome's done an outstanding job. It's it's amazing the jump that you see from guys from year one to, into year two in terms of just the overall knowledge, and then they have to go apply that and, and bring it to the field. And I think, you know, Rome, when he first got here, he started off really strong, and I thought he was having an a outstanding season. And then, unfortunately, he, he got injured versus Detroit, and I think that, you know, affected 
him. It affected all of us. And um, so it's good to see him kind of pick up where he was at at, at one time and um, very encouraged by his progress his, and just his overall knowledge. He, you can tell he feels comfortable. I think really all the guys that were a part of it last year that were rookies, it's, it's amazing how much or how far they've come up to this point. Sean's done a nice job. I think there's there's still a lot uh, um, of growth in front of him, obviously, but uh, it's just you know it's about it's it's different for these guys that maybe haven't had the the long play calls and all that and being under center and so there there's definitely a transition there. Will you get a better idea if you need a better quarterback by the end of the spring off I believe so. I believe so. But I think all those guys have done a lot a lot of nice things and um, we'll kind of take it, you know, and evaluate it when we get to the end of it. How do you view having three? Is that, is that enough? I know some teams like to go four in that room. I just think it's really, really difficult to get four guys the amount of reps that you need to get in order for them to show what they can do. Certainly there's times when you have a veteran guy, um, like we've had in years past, where you're not going to play him in the preseason, then it's a little bit more doable. But, um, you know, it's just it's really hard to – I mean, Jordan needs a ton of reps. Um, they all do. And so how do you divvy those up? You know, if, if, if we feel like we need a fourth, then um, certainly we'll bring, bring one in. How close is Eric Stokes to being back out on the field practicing? He's done, a, he's done a great job. I think he's made a lot of strides in, in uh, his rehab. And he's been running around. And so hopefully, you know, before the end of this, maybe he'll he'll get in there for some individual. I don't foresee him in any team situations th through the course of OTAs and into minicamp. Now, what do you think in terms of the timeline on your offensive line? We know what you have on the left side, but whether it's center, right guard, or right tackle, it looks like you want to give Jordan a lot of competition opportunities. You want to carry that all the way through the jump to minicamp? Yeah, I would say so. I think it's and, – and we do that naturally anyways. We always are kind of – Cross training these guys that you know whether they're a, a tackle, kicking them into guard, and if they're a guard, maybe moving them down to center. So um, that's just part of our process, and it's it's helped us out, I would say, because we've had a um, a lot of different combinations, especially last year up front, and um, it's just part of how we train those guys. No, no. It, this is usually, so we, we've done it a little bit different than maybe in years past in terms of how we've installed. Um, just sticking with two installs per week instead of every day being a new install. Um, but you can tell, like, this is the first time they've heard some of this stuff was, you know, some of the plays today. And then hopefully on Friday, it'll be more of a review for them. Um, but it, it starts to compound and kind of jump on them a little bit, I would say, at this point. And I also think just when you, we've had a lot more call it periods than maybe in years past. Um, and I think that can be a little bit challenging too, because you're talking about, you know, the entire, everything that you've installed up to that point is, you know, a viable option. And that can be hard for these young guys as opposed to, when you go into a game and you have a, you know, a very specific game plan and you're, you're only going to run certain things out of certain looks, it's a little bit easier to digest. And ultimately, you have you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You have four days to kind of digest that information before you go play on Sunday. Well, I think every year's uh, not to discount year four or contract years or anything like that, but I think every year is important in this league because you can never take anything for granted. You just never know what's going to happen. And uh, but I do think he's had the right mindset and attacked it the right way, and he's done a great job, um, you know, on the, on the with his reps in there. But also, we're we're practicing in shorts, you know, and, and t-shirts, so there's not full contact, and that's part of his game as well that I think that he does a really good job with is just being able to lower his pads and, you know, inflict some pain on the opposition. I know it's really early with Musgrave. I mean, it's like really early, but 
he just looks different than what you've had here in the past that position, right? He is different. Yeah. So when, yeah. Um, when you see a talent like that, do you try to force the issue with him to try to give him more and more, or, you, or, or how do you handle like, I've got some pretty obvious Yeah, I think um, any time with these young guys that you're going to try to throw as much at them as possible this time of the year. So it kind of gives you a gauge in terms of when we go into training camp, how much and how fast do we want to install whatever it is that we're installing. So, uh, But he's a really, really intelligent player. I think every time he goes out there, if he, if he makes a mistake, he definitely he hasn't made many of the, the same mistakes twice because he's, he's super into it, um, very intentional, deliberate about his work, um, invested, and he, he continues to show progress every day. And certainly he's, he does have an elite trait that he can flat fly, and he's, he's a big, long target. So we're, we're really excited about him and the progress he's made up to this point, and we've got to continue to push him. Two more, please. What is it about that tight end position specifically that makes it difficult for a rookie to make an impact? Well, there's just so much that you have to, um, you know, so much knowledge that you have to acquire in terms of you're responsible in the running game and in the pass game, and you might have some protection responsibility. So I think outside of the quarterback position, you're talking on, uh, on the offensive side of the ball, the tight ends have to know the second most of anybody because they, they've got every facet of the game. Well, I think we're, we're just very young at certain spots. And so for, you know, you know, putting together specifically the offense has been a challenge in terms of, you know, just towing that line in terms of what is too much and what is enough to, we call it, you want to have enough ammo going into a game in order to keep people off balance and whatnot. And so kind of navigating that and then certainly just, you know, being a part of, our other phases, uh, you know, within our um, our offense and we fence. So, um, but that's that's standard. So I don't think it's crazy different than than years past. It's just the fact that we've got a lot of youth at some certain spots, specifically on the offensive side of the ball, has been um, you know a little bit more challenging to navigate in terms of what, what do we really want to be about.